everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Join in, join in, join in. Love you, too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I just did a live on um, Yahweh. I just did a live on Facebook and Instagram, and um, I, I I couldn't get my TikTok to work, y'all. So I had to come over here and come special for y'all because I was trying to do all three of them together. But since my kids brought my other tablet, bad behinds, um, it w it wouldn't work right. So I had to come over here specifically just for y'all. So this is hand tailored for TikTok, and I'm going to post it on YouTube. But um, I had gave um, I had gave a great sermon ish. I was gonna be well. I was in Peter, First Peter chapter five, and I was in Revelations three. So that's where we're gonna be today. We're gonna be in First Peter chapter five, and I'm gonna start in verse five. So verse five and five, chapter five and five, and then I'm gonna be in Revelations three. And I really. I really read the whole chapter, which is 22 chap 22 verses, and that's what we're going to do, too. Mm. So I was talking about faith moves and just how God had challenged me to really practice what I preach when it talked about faith moves. And I was telling them how I was terrified and how I had to close out a chapter in my life um, yesterday and how... How I just had to hold God's hand and how I was petrified and terrified and I was not in the best head place for like the last two days because um, I had to leave my, my job and just trust God and just know that he is who he is and he's the same God and he, you know, I'm not going to be bullied by anybody. I'm not going to be none of that. So me and God had a conversation and ultimately I had to leave. And so... I'm going to be on here a little bit more just for a little while and then I'm going to get back at it. But right now, mentally, I got to come back and reset and refocus and restart and get myself back together and just trust that God is God and he loves me and I love him and I trust him. So that's my little spiel. But this is, um, hmm, that was a little tough to get out. I got it out on the other social media sites. But this one was a little bit tough to get out. I don't know why. <laughs> but um, if I was to title this anything, it would be, He Who Has Ears, Let Him Hear. That would be the title for me. Um, in Revelations 3, it talks about that three times in that little bit, in the 22 verses, three of those verses are, He Who Has Ears, Let Him Hear. So God gave me a couple words and he had me define them. And then he, um, the main word that he had me define, and then this is going to segue into first Peter, which I'm going to read is overcome. So he had me, um, yes, God always provides baby. Oof, Lord knows I'm not, I'm not scared. I was, I was shaking mentally. I was gone cause I worked so hard to get where I was and just to walk away from it. It, 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 it took something out of me. Yeah. So just to walk away from what I worked so hard for. It took something out of me. But I'm not anybody's doormat. I am not going to be belittled. I'm not going to be treated like I'm nothing. I'm going to shake the dust off of my feet. And I'm going to keep walking. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Period. I know who I am and I know my worth. And that's that. So, it says... <laughs> it says, to overcome is to succeed in dealing with a problem or difficulty. To prevail and to defeat... Um, to get better, to get the better of a, to get the better of in a struggle or conflict, to conquer or to defeat the enemy. So this is how we're going to segue to First Peter verses five and eight. To overcome, in in this case, is to defeat the enemy at his own game. To defeat the enemy at his own game. To win, and to put the devil in his rightful place. When it says to put the devil in its rightful place, let me tell you where the devil is supposed to be. 
It says, to be watchful is to be alert. The enemy walks around like a roaring lion seeking who he may, who he may devour. The snakes slither and hide and they blend in well. This next level, you will need to have 2020 vision to see clearly for who is for you and who is against you. The devil is like a slithering snake and he's slithering around and you can be in your yard doing yard work and a snake can be right next to you and you will never know until the snake is ready to reveal itself. But if you got the eyes to see and the ears to hear, you can hear that snake crunching on those leaves. You can you can feel that snake around you. You can see that snake trying to blend in with the leaf. You're not a leaf devil. You're a snake. And our heels were made to crush your head. And you are under our feet. We see you for the snake that you are, devil. We see you for the snake that you are, devil. And you can no longer slither and hiss and slide anywhere in our lives, devil. We see you for what you are. 1 Peter 5. God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Man will try to exalt you. God will exalt you. Man will say, if you do this for me, then I will exalt you. If you sign on the dotted line and if you sacrifice X, Y, and Z, then I will exalt you. God says, if you love me, if you keep my commandments, if you're obedient to me, if you're humble, I will exalt you. That's what God says. You ain't got to sign your life away. You ain't got to, to, to rob Peter to pay, pay Paul. All you got to do is trust and know. God says, I will exalt my humble. That's what I'm going to do, says God. I will exalt my humble. That's what I'm going to do. God gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under his mighty hand that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant because the adversary, the devil walks around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings that are experienced by your brother, brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to external glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while will establish you i love when i hear that because after you have suffered a while god will exalt you after you suffered a while you don't gotta worry about crying no more you don't gotta worry about going to fight no more god is saying after you suffered a while i will exalt you I will establish you. I will put you before great men. I will put titles on you. I will put a crown on you. After you have suffered a while. After you have suffered. Hmm. My God. Mm. I'm going to come over. Let me see. After you have, To him be the glory of dominion forever. I'm going to come over to Revelations really quick. Pick this up really quick. It says, God will strengthen what remains. God knows that you are tired. God knows the secret battles that you have been fighting. God knows. And he is about to give you strength. And he is about to have you energized. He's about to give it all back to you. God knows after each battle. Hold on. One that after each battle, it takes a lot out of you. And he knows that he's going to lose you if he doesn't step in and help you right now. Um, sorry, y'all. I'm about to put it on do not disturb in one second. <laughs> um, the devil, I'm going to get this word out. That's what I'm talking about. God knows after... Um, Yes, God knows that after each battle, you're tired, you're depleted. Just like when Jesus came out of the 40 day, 40 night fast in the wilderness, when he went out the wilderness, that he had to have the angels come and minister to him because he was drained. After each battle that you go through, you become depleted, you become drained. You're like, God, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And God is saying, hold on, I am coming. Hold on, I am coming. If you're just joining in, I read 1 Peter 5, um, verses 5 through 8, and now I'm in Revelations 3. 
But God is saying that he's going to fill you back up again. He's going to have the right people come minister to you, come love on you, come help do some praise and worship with you and love you back to life again. Because he knows that that last battle just took so much out of you. He knows that you're tired. He knows that you're drained. He says, I am coming in to strengthen what remains in you. To strengthen what remains in you. He knows. He knows. And the angel of the Lord. Let me jump into Revelations 3. Be watchful. Verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen um, be watchful and strengthen the things which remains that are ready to die for I have not found the works perfect before God remember therefore that you have received and heard hold fast and repent therefore if you have not watched um, therefore if you will not watch I will come upon you as a thief and you will not know the hour which I come upon you have few names in Sardis, which have not been defiled by their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out their name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And the angel of the church in Philadelphia writes these things. These things which um these things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, and he who opens opens and no one shuts, and he who shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength which have kept my word, and have not defiled my name. Indeed, I will make all of those in the synagogue of Satan who will say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have always loved you God is literally about to have your enemies come back and sit at your feet and they're gonna see that God was always for you that God has never left you even though they hoped and prayed that God would even though they laughed they mocked they scoffed and they said who is your God where is your God do he not see me doing x y and z to you if this is your God why he won't come rescue you just like the devil did Jesus when he was in the wilderness the devil was like oh oh if God is your God or if you are the son of God then throw yourself down shouldn't the angels come and rescue you or shouldn't 72,000 angels come like the devil just kept like oh where is your God if you are the son of God, if you are this devil, we ain't got nothing to prove. We ain't got nothing to prove. Nothing. Nothing. But God is going to exalt his children in the very presence of the enemies. God is going to prepare the table for his children in the presence of the enemies. You ain't got nothing to prove. All you got to do is be still and know. All you got to do is keep being humble and keep walking with God. All you got to do is keep walking and talking with God. And God is saying they're going to have to come back because they're liars, they're cheaters, they're scoffers, they're connivers, they're prideful, they're boastful. And they're going to fall. And when they fall, baby, they're going to see you rise. What goes up must come down. And their time is up. And their time is up. God is done. God is done having the pride, the prideful sit up here and look like they're winning. God is saying, I'm tearing down their synagogues. I'm tearing down their kingdoms. I'm tearing down their churches. I'm tearing down their buildings. And I am rising up my children. See? Don't you see that I'm opening doors that no man can open? See? Don't you see that I'm shutting doors that no man can shut? See? Don't I, Don't you see that I'm rising my children up? See? Don't you see the table that I'm preparing for my children? Don't you see? Don't you see? They're about to have to look at God's children again. They're about to have to look at God's children again. You are the answer to a lot of people's prayers. Although the devil wants to act like you're absolutely nothing, you are the solution and you were created for such a time as this. See, devil, you counted God's children out. See, devil, you're going to have to come back and spend the block on God's children again. See, devil, you thought you were done with God's children, but God says, look at my children again, devil. Look at my children again, 
devil. See? <laughs> See? Because you have kept my because you have kept my commands to preserve, I will keep you from the hour of trial which has come upon the whole world to test to test those who dwell in the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one will take your crown. I love that. That no one will take your crown. See? Don't you see that God has a crown upon your head? Don't you see that in this hour God is placing a crown upon your head? see hmm. mm, my god come on 12 he he who overcomes i will make him a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go out no more i will write on him the name of my god and the name of the city of my god the new jerusalem which comes down from heaven <clears throat> from my god and i will write on him the new name mm. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And the angel of the Lord um, wrote, and these things says, um, and these things says, Amen. The faithful and the true witnesses, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you have neither cold nor hot. I w could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say, I am rich. I have become wealthy. I have no need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, and blind and naked. I will counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed that um to anoint your eyes with eye saliva that you may see as many as i love i rebuke and i chasten therefore be zealous and repent behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come in to him and dine with him and him with me to over to him who overcomes i will grant and sit with me on my throne as i also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne he who has ears let him hear what the spirit says to the churches i knock every day i knock every day let's use this let yes yeah, let, let's use this as a moment for us to call god to our door God says he knocks every day. What is your response if God is knocking at your door? What is your response if God is literally knocking at your door every day? Do you say, who is it? Like you normally do. Do you peep out the blinds like in the projects? You know, the windows are messed up because you nosy. Do you look at the peephole? Do you look at the ring camera? Or do you open the door and say, here I am? Or do you open the door and say, here I am? If you're ready to open the door and say, here I am, go ahead and put that in the comment section. Here I am, God. If you're ready for God to come into your life and change it around because he sets, at, he sets, um, he sits at your table and he prepares it for your enemies. If you're ready, only if you're ready, because this is a big statement. If you're ready, tell God, here you are. Here I am, God understand this because i wouldn't be a good teacher if i don't tell you what's going to happen after you say here i am before you make that declaration understand that your life is about to get flipped upside down that people are about to turn on you that god is about to remove people people are going to silence you people are going to turn away from you god is going to remove you from jobs houses all this stuff is about to happen i'm gonna tell you what's going to happen but after that you're going to rise there's going to be a glow on your life. There's going to be a glow on your life that's undeniable. Man can't give it to you. Favor is going to follow you. People are going to run you down to favor you. Doors are going to fly off the hinges for you. God is going to do something amazing for you. People that wronged you all these years ago are going to come back and apologize. You're not even going to be looking for it, but it's going to find you. Your gifts are going to be amplified. Your gifts are going to open doors that no man can open. Your gifts are going to put you before great men. Your gifts are going to make room for you. When you tell God, here I am, he says, bet. 
my children hears. And I'm about to do something amazing for my children. When you give God your yes, he does his perfect work. He does his perfect work. God, right now, we repent of our sins, known and unknown, seen and unseen. We repent of gossip and lying and talking about all of these people and just laughing when people were falling instead of reaching down and helping. We repent for arguing with people that we should just be like, you got that? You got that? We repent for holding anger and harvesting anger inside of us. We repent so we can make room for you to come and dwell with us, Father God. We repent and we make room for you, God. Father God, right now I say for all of us under the sound of my voice, Father God, I say speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Speak, God. Speak. Do what only you can do, God. Your servants are listening. We have the ears to hear. When I hear he who has ears, let him hear. I go back to growing up in school and you had the class clowns and you never really, really could learn because the class clowns end up playing around too much. And then you think about the, the people that persecute Christians, the Christian killers and all those things, the Saul's. I think about that because the class clowns, they couldn't really read. They couldn't comprehend. They didn't understand. So they played around too much because they didn't have the education or the skills to know what was really going on in class. So they did too much. They bullied you. They did this and that because they didn't understand. They didn't have the ears to hear what was in front of them. They didn't have the eyes to see and read what was on the page to understand. So they acted out. But God is saying, I am giving you ears to hear. This is my declaration for you that you will have ears to hear. I think about with Jesus and his disciples when he was revealed right and he was walking with his 12 disciples mind you he said <clears throat> who do you say I am hold on don't you play with me by that road don't play with me hi tell it back he said to his 12 who do you say I am who do the people say I am? And then some people like, oh, some say you are the Messiah. Some say this, some say that. Only one out of the 12 understood. Only one out of the 12 had ears to hear the spirit of the Lord. And it was Peter. And he said, you are the Christ. Jesus said to him, man did not reveal that to you. The Holy Spirit had to deliver that to you. Peter had ears. Peter had ears. Let's go back a little bit more. Let me, let me break this down a little bit more so I can open up your ears so you can understand. Remember when Jesus was walking on the water. Remember Jesus was walking on the water and all of the disciples was in the boat. And they said, who is that? Is that a ghost? And they got afraid. But then Peter said this, Lord, if this is you, tell me to come. Peter wasn't afraid. Peter's ears opened. His eyes began to see the shadow come out like, is that Jesus? Is it not Jesus? Peter said, Lord, if it's you, then tell me to come. Jesus didn't only specify for Peter to come. Jesus simply said these words, come, come. It was 12 disciples on that boat. How many disciples got out and walked on water? If it's 12 disciples, how many do we know got off that boat and walked on water with Jesus. One, one. Now, did Jesus say only one of y'all come out here? Did Jesus say, Peter, only you come out here? Or did Jesus simply say, come? Only one had eyes to see and ears to hear and understand that this was his moment that this was his moment. Yes, he got out and started walking and he got doubtful and began to sink, but he still called out for God or called out for Jesus to come save him. He still knew who his savior was. Only one got off that boat. Only one had his ears open. Only one identified Jesus as the Christ. Only one. It is time for us to open our ears even if we have to be the only one. God, let me be the only one then. 
Let me have enough faith to get off that boat and begin to walk one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot. Let me high step it on the waters, God. Let me go out into the deep, God. Let me lunch out into the deep, God. Here I am, God. Here I am. Tell me to come then. Tell me to come. Tell me to come. He heard God. He heard God. And he came. I'm getting ready to sign off. But I'm going to start doing this in all of my live videos. So just listen. A lot of people are constantly getting scammed. And I don't want you to get scammed. I only have one TikTok. I only got one YouTube. I only got one Facebook. I only got one Instagram. Facebook and Instagram are both. I think my I think my YouTube is verified too. But all of those are verified. I think my TikTok is the only one that isn't verified. I only have one Cash App. I only have one PayPal. I only have one Zelle. My Cash App is Pastor Lindaria. My Zelle and my PayPal is Lindaria Watts, the number four at Gmail. That is it. I don't know who these people are. They're coming like a floodgate, but that's what they're going to do when you rise to the top. When you rise to the top, all of these things are going to start happening. I ask that you walk in wisdom. I ask that you walk with knowledge and understanding that the devil has his job to do to confuse you, to try to throw salt on my name, to try to say I take money from all of these people. That's what the devil does. I'm sorry if some people got scammed. It is not me. I don't have the time in the day to even sit right here and create all these pages. But that's all I got to say about that. Um, my prayer is that God opens up your ears. God, open up your eyes so you can hear and see him and have the faith to walk on the water. God is getting ready to come in some of you guys' lives. And if you said, here I am, get ready for God to come in and blow your mind. Get ready. I love you too. Get ready for God to blow your mind. I love you guys, and we are about to go see the lights get lit up tonight. I'm excited. Um, today, I did a lot of things that I normally wouldn't do because I would work 9 to 10 hours a day, and then I'll come do my ministry. So today, I got to go to a parade, to uh, a Christmas parade with the kids, and tonight, I'm getting ready to go do the lights with the kids, and I actually get to live a little bit um, versus just work, 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 and I really... I really am excited to see what the next chapter has for me in life, just in general. And um, I just feel free. So you guys will see a lot more of me. Um, I would try to schedule some things, but I'm just excited for this next chapter. I think it's going to be the best chapter. So I love you guys and have a great, 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 great night. Thank you for sitting with me.